Hey, good morning, everybody. A little late this morning as I got things going. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got gas, the morning edition. Thanks for tuning in. As many of you know, um, I'm kind of a car guy. I've kind of worked in the industry for the last 40 plus years. Um, I know a little bit about cars. I know the difference between a two door and a four door. I know the difference between a pony car, a muscle car, a GT, and, well, uh, any other type of car that's out there. I've learned a little bit over the years. Hi, Herm, how you doing today? Herm Peterson watching us right now. All right, one of the people that profess, or the organizations that profess to be experts in this area, are the guys at Motor Junkie, motorjunkie.com. It's a website. You see them advertising prominently on uh, Facebook. You see their ads and their so stories about top 25 or most forgettable or most unforgettable or the best of this and the worst of that. And they just came out with 40 unforgettable sports cars of the 80s and 90s. 40 unforgettable sports cars. All right. The cars they're bringing up so far are somewhat unforgettable, but there's a problem with them. 40 Unforgettable Sports Cars is the title of their article. The first car they pick on, well, it's a Mercedes-Benz four-door sedan. It's not a sports car. Guys, if you're going to talk about a car, at least pick the right vehicle. It's a Mercedes-Benz C36 from AMG. That's not a sports car. That's right. Sam Fiorani is saying the same thing. Junkie, Motor Junkie is just clickbait. Yes, they give automotive journalists a bad name. And this is another example of it. And I picked on them a few, picked on them a few times. But this is one of their issues. A four-door sedan is in no way, shape, or form a sports car. Now, there is a race series in Europe for the so-called DTM. They're sedans. Sedan racing. All right, now let's go on to the next car that they pick as an unforgettable sports car. Now, this was a car that was only out for a short time. It was very radical for the time, and it came from the people at Subaru. Instead of having their typical four-cylinder engine, this car had a six-cylinder. I've got a friend that's got one of these six-cylinder engines in one of the new sports cars, and man, that thing flies. But this is not a sports car. It's a closed coupe. It is called the Subaru SVX. Subaru didn't make this as a sports car. They never sold it as a sports car. It is an all-wheel drive. It was only available with an automatic transmission. Okay. It's not a sports car. At best, it's a sports coupe. It had very radical side windows. They didn't all roll down, and part of them were almost part of the roof itself as they curved and shaped the top of the car. Neat-looking car. I'd like to have one. They're not very expensive. You can get them for less than $4,000. The problem is the automatic transmission was a weak point on these cars. Knew, they knew it. They couldn't change it. There was, uh, I heard, a variation of this body style and body that they actually had a front-wheel drive version with a manual transmission. Good morning, Neil Panks from the uh, UK, or good evening for you. But the four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, automatic transmission, Sports GT is what it really was, is not and never was a sports car. But Motor Junkie, seeing it is. This is a sports car. The Lotus Yes, the Lotus Elan M100. Now, it was their foray into front-wheel drive. It was kind of a nice-looking wedge-shaped car, but it was front-wheel drive. And I'm sorry, but real sports cars aren't front-wheel drive. And that was the issue with this car. It was nice-looking. Didn't come into the States in very large numbers, if at all. Now, Sam Fiorani is saying, for the automatic, the Subaru SVX was a nice GT. Yeah, agree with you 100%. All right, so finding the Lotus Elan M100 is not necessarily difficult. 
Well, it is in the United States. They didn't bring very many of them in. The maintenance in the car is not very difficult because they used commonplace parts. But it is a sports car. It's not unforgettable. It's just unrecognizable to most. Now here's another one. The BMW 5 Series. The M5. I worked for BMW, folks. I worked for corporate. BMW never called the 5 Series BMWs sports cars. They never were a sports car. No one called them a sports car. Yes, the M Series were performance vehicles, but they were sedans. They are in no way, shape, or form a sports car. So, motor junkie, mm -mm, you blew it, guy, on this one. The next one, and this is laughable, the next car they call a sports car is an Impala SS. What? This thing is huge. It's gigantic. It is far from a sports car. Yes, it was a performance car of the time. It had a 350 injected engine. Automatic transmission only. Rear wheel drive. Good part. It was comfortable. It was good looking for the time. It was not a sports car. In no way, shape, or form was the Impala, the Chevy Impala SS, ever a sports car. The next one up, not even close. It is a sport coupe, and this is the Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX. Now, the GSX was a nice-looking car. It had good rounded lines. It was relatively reliable. You could get it turbocharged. It had some horsepower. It was not a sports car. It was a coupe. Now, they did have a Spider version or Roadster version, convertible, but it's still not a sports car. A convertible top does not make it a sports car. And this one that they're pricking on or showing us is a coupe. Not even close, guys. And these guys are getting paid to write this stuff. Another Mercedes comes in, and they call it the 500E. It's, again... A four-door sedan. Now, this one that they're talking about has a V8. Okay, it's got some horsepower, but it's still a four-door sedan. Now, they're saying the Mercedes-Benz 500E was powered by a Porsche-derived 5-liter V8 engine. Good horsepower, but it's a sports sedan, not a sports car. Good morning, Murray. Roseanne Hernandez, how are you? There's another one. Toyota Celica. Really, guys? Celica? A sports car? Never was. Never, ever intended to be. But they say the Toyota Celica all-track turbo was a sports car. Wrong again, guys. Not even close. A performance compact? Yeah. So performance compact sedan? Yeah. But not... Uh, any way s stretch of the imagination, a sports car. Now, this one's another laughable one. Oldsmobile. Yes, an Oldsmobile Cutlass Quad 4 442. It's a two door coupe, guys. Oldsmobile never marketed a sports car in their entire history. They never had a sports car. But these. Brain Trust at, or this Brain Trust at Motor Junkie says this was a sports car. Freddie Salzman, how you doing, cuz? Doing good for me. So the Quad 4, pretty potent for the time. Four-cylinder, dual overhead cam. It was the beginning of Chevrolet and GM's foray into performance four-cylinder cars. And in a test, the same engine that basically went into this Oldsmobile did go over 200 miles an hour with A.J. Foyt behind the wheel in a special built car at the Proving Grounds in Casa Grande, Arizona. But sports car, not even close. Now, if they were talking about the Oldsmobile version of the Corvette that they used as a show vehicle back in the early 50s, I'd almost say, yeah, there you go. But that's not it. All right, here's another car, kind of borderline. Porsche 968 Club Sport. This is a GT car. Sporty car, but it's a GT. During the 90s, Porsche had 
a number of different variations on the 924 that came out in the late 70s. The 968 was a very good-looking machine, but it was far from a sports car. It's a GT car. There was never a sports car version of it. So, guys, you missed the mark. You got one so far right. All right, here's another laughable one. Dodge Neon. Yep, they call it a sports car. The Dodge Neon RT. It had a nice dual overhead cam engine. It had a Viper-inspired stripe down the middle. It was front-wheel drive. It was a nice two-door coupe. It was a performance coupe for the time, but it was a compact. Far, far from being a sports car. Chrysler, they have never built a sports car in modern times. GT car, the Viper, but definitely not a neon. Oh, here's another laughable one. Oh, my gosh. Where are these guys getting this information? A Nissan Sentra. Yeah, we're not even going to talk about that. that that's just ridiculous to even consider. Yeah, it had a two-liter engine, but it's a sedan. It's a compact. It's a sport compact at best. Oh, here we go again with a four-door. <music> Volvo. We got a Volvo. Now, it's not the 1800. That would be uh, almost a sports car, a GT car, close. But the Volvo 850R as a sports car? No, never was, never will be. It had 240 horsepower. It's not a bad looking car, but it's a Volvo and it's not a sports car. All right, we'll go through a few more of these and we'll, we're going to move on to something more fun and, and so forth. But Volvo, no. So far, one out of the ten we've talked about. It ain't going to happen, folks. All right, here's one. I like the car. I've driven the car. It's a nice sport compact. The Volkswagen Scirocco. Scirocco? Sports car? No, it's a sport coupe. But this one's actually the, the Corrado VR6. Good performance. Nice handling car. Sports car, no. Yeah, John Gomes, I see you there. Volkswagen has never built a sports car. And to prove it, Motor Junkie calls the Beetle a sports car. Their next one was the GLS 1.8 liter turbo Beetle. No. Not now. Not ever has a Volkswagen Beetle been a sports car. Next up, coming close, but it's a GT, the Mitsubishi and the Dodge variation, the Stealth and the GT3000. These are GT cars. It even said so in the name, GT, 3000 GT. It was not a sports car. Close, but no cigar. But Motor Junkies, giving you information that just isn't right. And we talked about the difference between pony cars, muscle cars, and so forth early on when we started. <sighs> These guys, the Pontiac Firebird, SLP Firehawk. Sports car? No. Pony car? Yeah. Bordering on muscle car? Kind of. But the Firehawk was a special edition from SLP, kind of like Shelby does for Mustangs. SLP did for Camaros and Firebirds. The neat little cars got some good performance, got good handling. Not a sports car. Mustang! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, I was wondering where they were going to get to that. No, never has been. The closest they came to a Mustang sports car was the 1962 variation that Iacocca was working on that was actually a two-seat rear-engine machine, or mid-engine. That is as close to a sports car as Mustangs have ever gotten. But the Cobra R is definitely a performance car. It is just not 
and never was a sports car. All right, we talked about the Firebird. Here comes the Camaro. They're saying the IROC C was a sports car. No, it wasn't a sports car. Never was a sports car. Never will be a sports car. And here's another one. The Motor Junkies missed the mark on completely. Buick Grand National GNX turbocharged V6. It's a coupe. It's a midsize coupe. It is not a sports car. Never was. Never will be. Buick Grand National. Nice performance car. I've seen these V6s run really strong. It is not a sports car. Now, a car that never made it to the U.S. shores is the Ford Escort RS Cosworth. Another sport compact. Not a sports car. But that's what they're calling it. So, oh, I don't know if we've got to go through these. The closest they get now is the Corvette. They actually call the Corvette a sports car. Okay, I can buy that one. Z51, ZL1, any Corvette. Yeah, or ZR1, like it. And they're saying, they're, they're picking up the C4 model Corvette. Not any other Corvettes, but the C4 model. Okay, I'll go with that. I've got a C4. I'll, I'll take that. Mustang SVO, another Mustang. Four-cylinder turbocharged, nicely balanced car. Expensive, though. Cost more than a Mustang GT and didn't have quite as much horsepower. It did have some unique features to it. It had a different hood. It had different suspension. It had different wheels. It had a different interior. It was a very nicely put together vehicle. Definitely not a sports car. All right, the last one we're going to go over, and they bring up the Firebird Trans Am again. It's just not there. Okay, this one's definitely not there. I got to pick this one up because this tells you not to believe what you read from Motor Junkie at all. They are calling the Ford Contour a sports car. Yes, Sam, in 1987, they did bump the horsepower up, but the first SVOs came up a little short at 175 horsepower, which was about 25 horsepower less, if I remember correctly, from the uh, 302s and the Mustang GTs. The Ford Contour. A four-door economy car. A mommy car. A car you pick up the kids at school. It's an economy car you bought because you needed four doors and didn't really want a Taurus. The Ford Contour is not a sports car in any stretch of the imagination. It is just not there at all. Motor Junkie, this is a total fail. So I suggest you go back to the drawing boards Pull the check back from the guy that wrote this for you because he obviously had no clue what he's talking about. Or she. I haven't looked at who wrote this, but just not, not there. Motor Junkie, total fail. I'm Hot Rod Pop. You've got gas, the morning edition. Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you guys at another at an event soon. Sam Furia, Ferrani, uh, the Contour SVT was a fun car, but not a sports car. I agree 100%. You can't have a sports car with four doors, period. That's what it is. All right, guys, I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas, the morning edition, brought to you by Service Tech Equipment in Simi Valley. Service Tech, helping garages and private owners of, of garages they work on their cars with, even through this pandemic. They are open. They're there to help you. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas. Service Tech, find them on Facebook. They're in Simi Valley, California. You have a great day, and keep it on the road. It's Wacky Wednesday.